Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. During the Davos conference, Ripple CEO, his name is Brad Garlinghouse, mentioned that games were being built on the XRP ledger. Considering Ripple being a payments company, this recent revelation took the community by surprise. The ethereal panel at Davos had Brian Bailendorf, Ethereum and Consensus's Joseph Lubin, and Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse, who discussed various topics ranging from payments, remittance solutions, to games being developed on the blockchain technology. The discussion about games on blockchain erupted as Zynga's developer, Eric Shiremeyer, asked the panel if the blockchain for gaming industry was being underhyped. Garlinghouse stepped in to answer the question. He said, I think this is one area where blockchain use is underhyped. It is incredibly interesting in terms of which underlying blockchain is most efficient. I think there's a couple being built upon the XRP ledger, and I think it's going to be very interesting space to watch in 2019. As surprising as the above sounds, there are actual proofs to support Garling's house statements. Connecting the dots, Ripple has already partnered with Microsoft since 2015. Moreover, Microsoft Azure Blockchain as a Service, or BAAS, which is being led by Marley Gray, ultimately focused on the payments. With Ripple's interledger protocols, payments, and remittance doesn't seem too far-fetched. In addition to Ripple and Microsoft partnerships, R3 is an enterprise blockchain software firm with over 300 partnerships, which includes Microsoft. R3 has built a custom base, which can use their quarter network and core dApps to create an ecosystem for easier and instant payments. Uh, scrolling past what Microsoft said, one of the kind of, I guess it was maybe around here, the CEO of GSR, his name is Christian Gill, spoke about how the gaming industry is an untapped market that can prosper with the right technology like blockchain. He said that games usually purchase in-game items, which becomes relatively useless after there isn't any trusted platform to perform such actions. Gill said, I guess it was a natural step to use Ripple Protocol, the Ripple Protocol, to allow the users the citizens of Beachhead to trade these different digital assets. Gil continued that he will be leaving, leading the market, making for the Beachhead project and make sure that there is a liquid market and it offers other tokens such as XRP, BTC, and Ether, the CTO of Blockchain Economy Director responsible for creating the crypto economy in the game, Alexis Sirkia said, the Ripple trading engine will act like a matching engine which is distributed and trustless. Ripple Engine is the only distributed trading engine that is mature enough to be used. It has a settling time of only four seconds and is a perfect vehicle for trading. Um, one, this is great. Two, I couldn't say that I didn't see something like this coming. I tried to reiterate many other times before. I think that there's a heavy misconception in the cryptocurrency space or amongst people who are relatively new to the cryptocurrency space uh that one coin or one blockchain can only do one thing that's not how they're made that's not how they work uh they can pretty much do almost all the exact same thing it's just a matter of uh getting to it first and being known as the platform which does this before everybody else like you know how ethereum got out first and they were the uh the dap ico platform you can do this on just about every other platform uh ripple also has uh the codius thing that they're building which will allow i think it's like smart contracts and stuff uh, every platform can do almost the exact same thing uh this is why i think it's very interesting when people kind of hype up one coin or one project or one blockchain as like being the end all to everything uh the money that the ripple team has behind them uh they are in a very healthy position to completely dominate Every other cryptocurrency project out there that's even thinking of putting out games like that, uh, they haven't really uh, stuck their neck out that far to try and be the the smart contract platform. They may just simply not be trying to do everything at once. Uh, but don't be fooled. There are definitely discussions happening behind the scenes, behind the doors, where people are definitely talking about things like this happening. I said it before, even two like two two and a half something years ago. Uh, and this is why I, there's a story that I have coming up that I think is actually, uh, quite, uh, quite fascinating. Uh, one of the things that I'm almost certain that's going to get the cryptocurrency space moving is the video game sector. And I, I don't know why there's not much more of a focus. Like I know that there are, I know there, there are people building apps and dApps and video games and there are cats and there are dogs and there, you can collect hats and trade in games and, you know, trading cards and stuff like that. But, uh, this is going, th this is a very easy spot to corner. 
Uh, if you can make a proper video game, and I don't mean like a a betting game where you're uh, like clicking numbers over here, betting 20x, and like watching a little uh what, what what are these things called a little like where you see the numbers and the crowns and everything lining up into three and you kind of get the coins i mean like an actual real game that you have money behind that you can push out to tons of people because they're there and just to kind of make sense of all of this there, there's so many games that we all play everyone at least has one game on their mobile phone when you're sitting on the train when you're sitting on a plane when you're sitting on waiting for a bus anything you're, you're playing these games because you kind of have nothing else to do, but usually they we kind of tend to fall into like the same kind of category. Like it's these quick, very fast games that you can play on the go. Um, and I've really yet to see anything that's kind of uh, mobile, if you kind of want to say that. Anyway, the point is, whoever gets this game out first, and people have been constantly saying the 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 killer dap that everyone's kind of waiting for to bring the cryptocurrency space to the hyper mainstream because we already are mainstream, but we need everyone to kind of, you know, we need one of those games that says like you have 10 million plus people have downloaded this. Uh, I think Ripple is very much in that position. It's a matter of if they are smart enough with how they do this. Uh, the Ripple team is very uh, smart when it comes to being able to market themselves to banks and to institutions. Not exactly sure how smart they are when it comes to the the, the video game uh platform you know boasting about yourself whatever the case might be anyway i thought this was incredibly interesting uh like i said this doesn't really surprise me it was clearly in the cards in some sort of way um i wouldn't even be surprised if they end up making a whole bunch of video games uh that are going to incorporate xrp in some sort of way uh don't know the exact specifics obviously i'm just hearing about this the same exact way that you are uh but this is going to this is going to i mean not to whatever uh video games are very big the video game industry is even larger uh there are tons of ways that you can make block stream block stream uh blockchain and cryptocurrencies go completely mainstream it's just a matter of really knowing what you're doing and a lot of the cryptocurrency projects like i said they're great with like marketing themselves as like a payment option but if they can do this for video games then they'll definitely uh remain in front anyway let's move on Next up, I don't know about this one. Uh, the Indian government has reportedly confirmed that the report containing a regulatory framework for cryptocurrencies by an inter-ministerial committee is being finalized. This confirmation is in response to a right to information filing by a local news outlet. Further along, the Indian government has been working on a crypto regulation for quite some time. That's an understatement for those who are relatively new here. They've been talking about this since the end of 2017, and they said, I am not in India, but they said that they would have this information by February, and then I believe it was April, and then I believe it was summer, and then they said September, and then they said December, and we still don't have it. The Interministerial Committee, or the IMC, headed by Subhash Chandra Garg, Secretary of the Department of Economic Affairs is tasked with developing the country's crypto regulatory framework. On Friday, local news outlet Coin Crunch India wrote that this report is the in the finalization stage. This publication filed a right to information on RTI request with the Department of Economic Affairs on the 13th of December last year, asking three questions. The first inquiry is whether the panel had submitted its report to the Ministry of Finance. The second, if the panel has recommended a ban on Bitcoin. Lastly, the publication asked point blank, we would like to receive a copy of the report. Can we? There's someone sitting on the phone. The Indian government finally replied to the RTI on Friday with only a brief statement. They said, the report of the committee is under finalization stage, hence prohibited under Section 8.3 of RTI Act of 2005. The news outlet acknowledged that Section 8 of the RTI Act allows an entity to withhold the data in certain circumstances. India's Ministry of Finance explained to Lok Sabha, the country's lower house of parliament, in December last year that the committee task is to study all aspects of cryptocurrencies and crypto assets, including Bitcoin, adding that the committee is working to develop a framework for regulating cryptocurrencies. Uh, my opinion in all of this is... In <laughs> India, you you should know this from from history and life. India has a lot of people. Um, they've been a central, uncentral focal point for cryptocurrencies for quite some time. Uh, more people have focused on China, uh, reigniting that crypto flame. But 
India with a billion people is probably going to have a significant effect as well on the entirety of the cryptocurrency space, especially since we know that there are an enormous amount of people in India who are looking to get into cryptocurrencies legally. There have been a lot of cryptocurrency exchanges who have had to close their doors because of lack of regulation. I'm going to assume uh, by them saying being finalized, they're probably not going to, they're going to try, in my opinion, withhold this information until summertime. It's just a very weird feeling. I don't see them doing it in February. I don't see it happening in April, uh, maybe even not even May. I think it'll be like a June, July type situation unless we end up getting some type of information from the U.S. government that something is going to happen with cryptocurrencies. And this is when I think every other country will either uh, hurry up or they'll release the information that they already have. And I, 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 I still believe that everyone's waiting for the U.S. to do something. I think nobody wants to uh, seem like a fool in the face of whatever the U.S. does. If the U.S. has like a super hyper, uh, like a good outlook on cryptocurrencies and they are trying to do it because they want the money to go to flow to their systems, I think we're going to see a situation where all the other countries will kind of follow suit. If the U.S. does anything uh, stringent or difficult. I think other countries will also maybe I think half of them will follow suit and then the other half will uh, try and jump into the money pool. Anyway, the point is this has been taking a very long time. I do not think myself that they are going to ban it. I do not think if they were working on the finalization stage of a regulatory framework that they would be uh, banning it outright. Um, however, I do believe that they are going to do exactly what we saw in a couple of other countries where they were... Um, not banning cryptocurrencies, but they were only allowing certain cryptocurrencies. I'm going to assume that Bitcoin is obviously going to be one that's allowed because tr bit transactions on Bitcoin can be traced. I'm going to also assume that the Central Bank of India is probably going to have something where you can use it. Uh, you may have to register with them or you may have to have a Bitcoin bank account with your actual bank to be able to transact in it simply because India is very uh, tight when it comes to money laundering and all that other stuff. I'm going to assume that XRP is go also going to be there. The XRP team, or rather the Ripple team, has had an office in India for the past two or three years. There was also news before, uh, for those who were not here in 2018, that the Ripple team has partnered with, I think, 70 or 80 percent of all the banks within India. So one can only assume if they've gotten that far, they've probably gotten a bit further over the last six months. And I, that's probably another coin. I can only assume Ethereum as well. Uh, Joseph Lubin seems to be pretty okay when it comes to uh, handling press conferences and like talking to world leaders and stuff like that. A lot of the other coins I'm a little skeptical on. I could see some forks of Bitcoin making it through. Um, I could see Ethereum Classic also making it through. Uh, but the the rest of it is kind of this like weird gray area. I'd, I'm surprised that we've even gotten this far with India, uh, but you better believe that somewhere behind the scenes, they've been doing an enormous amount of uh, homework, if you kind of want to call it that, to make sure that whatever they allow within the country, they are going to be in control of, especially I'm, I'm, I'm interested in seeing exactly what they end up doing for cryptocurrency exchanges. That's probably going to be one of the craziest things in the entire world. Who was the other country uh, like last week or something like that, who made, what was it, like the laws and like you have to do everything through the government. Like at the end of every month, you have to hand them like a statement that says exactly what you did. And every single person who's, who signed up with you, you have to have a copy of their idea. It was something completely insane. I think India is going to be the exact same way, but this does allow people to get into cryptocurrencies. Uh, like I said, s summertime. Uh, I'm not expecting any sooner. If it does, that'd be wonderful. But uh, as of right now, not even holding my breath for this. But it's nice to hear that uh, after a year and a half, they've they they've started getting to it. Let's move on. This this ties almost exactly into what we were talking about with uh, Venezuela uh, in the last video. Iran or Iran, depending on how you want to say it could unveil its state-backed cryptocurrency at the Electronic Banking and Payment Systems Conference in Tehran this week. This was said by local English language news outlet Al Jazeera. They said this yesterday. Iran, which has now faced sanctions from the United States since November, had previously planned to use blockchain-based financial tools as a way of sidestepping restrictions on its economic growth. Though a central bank issued digital currency or a CBDC which could be a real-baked crypto. Uh, it was thought that uh, Tehran could forge an alternative to SWIFT, the global payment system that some Iranian banks cannot access, which is also interesting. Pay attention to all of this that's happening. Once again, we have a situation where uh, the, the not the largest, the uh, most economically powerful country in the world 
has been pushing their thumb down on many other countries uh, around the world uh, because of what they view as what should be economic policies. Side note, because I know that people in the comment section can't tell uh, sometimes the things that I'm saying. I do not agree with the policies of these countries. I am not approving of these countries. I'm simply telling you what's happening behind the scenes uh, as far as like what the world is dealing with economically. We have a situation right now where there are multiple countries around the world who do not have access to SWIFT, who do not have access to the worldwide market simply because of the uh, the rules and regulations that the United States has put on them. Sources remain unsure whether such a large-scale implementation will occur, occur, wow, occur, but more localized uses for digital currencies, such as a consumer payment, uh, is likely an option. They certainly can't replace the likes of Bitcoin due to their centralized nature, but their existence is harmless. This was said by Yashar Rashhedi, a blockchain developer at Iranian firm Radfa, he told Al Jazeera. They added, even as central bank digital currencies may never find widespread everyday use among the general public, they may be able to offer some new features to startups and developers that had to work with centralized bank APIs before them, end quote. Iran is one of several states aiming to release centralized digital currencies, some of them also targeting U.S. sanctions. Russia's project, the crypto ruble, is still several years away from release, and I'll get back to that in a second. A government official said earlier this month, Venezuela's digital currency, the Petro, is already circulating but has faced multiple accusations of legitimacy and sanctions of their own. Uh, they didn't even have all the, all the countries that are actually over here. There are at least like seven right now who um, are either barred from SWIFT or have no access to the rest of the global economic system. Um, we had news in 2017, if I'm not mistaken, like the first utterings that Russia was creating their own central bank digital currency called the crypto ruble. Um, everyone was like, wow, that's crazy. They're creating their own thing. And then you kind of get to the, you know, the assumption why they're creating it is because they don't have access to the rest of the world and everyone else keeps sanctioning them. Uh, same exact thing with Venezuela. We have a, a perfect storm for cryptocurrencies right now because my idea is the ruble is not going to happen anytime soon people in venezuela aren't necessarily using this cryptocurrency especially when you watch documentaries and they talk about it no one's actually using it like people are being forced to use it for certain activities uh but it's like one less than one percent of one percent of the people within the country and i have a situation with iran where they're cre potentially creating their own cryptocurrency. Uh, this has been spoken about for quite a long amount of time. And I told you guys before, the fact that this is several years away, I'm optimistically unoptimistic. I told you I, I'd like to see, but well, this isn't really a good situation. I, I'd like to see a bit further into the future than you know we may actually be right now. Uh, what's going to end up happening is, is that they're probably going to create this, the same with a couple of other countries who've been talking about the idea of creating it. We also had the uh, the news that Japan was going to create their own central bank digital currency that fell apart because I'm pretty sure that the U.S. came to them and they were like, no. And that was kind of the end of it. There was also news that Europe was thinking of creating one. I'm pretty sure there was also a meeting that was held and somebody was like, no. So this is several years away. No one's using this. Um, I'm pretty sure that when they're creating these systems, there's probably not a huge amount of interoperability that these will be connected. You'll have to also have some type of an agreement that will accept your uh, dying cryptocurrency if you accept ours and so and so and so. We are on the cusp of this and I can feel it and I know that there's a country out there who wants to uh, declare this, uh, that they're either collecting Bitcoin because they're going to use it or that simply... They already have Bitcoin and they're going to use it as part of a payment method within their country. It's going to happen. Uh, these things are not going to last. If you listen to uh, not meetings, but like conferences and stuff like that with Andreas Antonopoulos and some of the other uh, larger crypto heads, if you kind of want to call them that, they, they spoke about this years ago. And this is the part that I find the most fascinating. I don't consider them oracles or anything like that, but it's kind of weird that they kind of saw this coming. And the idea was is that we were going to have a number of countries around the world who were going to be launching their own uh, central bank digital currencies, but they're all going to fail because they won't work together because we still have this idea of mistrust. What we don't get mistrust from is when we have these countries all accepting Bitcoin uh, for the sake of argument. I, I won't say that they're going to be accepting uh, Bitcoin Cash SV because life. 
uh, that this is the moment where they can only that they'll be able to send money between each other and that they'll also have confirmation that this is also happening uh, because it's on the blockchain. The point is we are very, very close to the situation where multiple other countries and I'm, I'm waiting uh, specifically for a couple of African countries to start doing this and a couple of South American countries. I don't really see many Asian countries doing this. I feel like they're under like uh, an economic uh, thumb at the moment. Uh, when we start getting these other countries talking about that they're releasing their own digital currencies because they may also be under sanctions and they may be under so-and-so or, they, or their, their nation's currency may simply be uh, garbage, uh, we're going to have one country who's going to release a, a statement about something and I, and I can feel it. And I, I don't know if I'm the only one, like I said, maybe I'm just being too optimistic. These things are going to fail. These things are not going to last. These central bank digital currencies, uh, the longer Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies stay alive, the more you, you have to understand that in every single country around the world, we're constantly onboarding new people every single day who are getting into the cryptocurrency space. Even if it's just a couple thousand every single day in every single country, this adds up very, very quick. If you have a year and a half situation where you're not giving information about something and it's happening in your country, uh, just organically, cryptocurrencies are growing. This is even without, uh, you know, uh, Google banning the word Ethereum or Google doing so and so or Facebook not allowing this on their platform. It's happening organically. And this is even more people who are getting into it. So the when they get used to an idea that they control their own money, and that they don't have to tell anyone what they have or what they're doing with it. When these are trying to be released, people will already have the idea in their head, as will their kids and their family members. I don't have to pay attention to this because I know that I can already pay on Bitcoin. And I know that Bitcoin is more secure. And I know that I can do this. And I know that so and so and so. And this is when we get the uh, the the hyper Bitcoinization of the world as it uh, is being called. But yeah, like I said, this is this is incredible. Like it's it's. We're very, very close and I can feel it. And I think at the moment, I think, first of all, it's a very big step. And I think many countries around the world are too afraid to even think of announcing something like this because um, should Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies fail, uh, that country is going to have a very hard time for a long time as, you know, they are, they're the losers of the group. Uh, but as I am more than certain that at least Bitcoin is probably never going to die, um, I think it's only a matter of time and that's going to be one of the, <sighs> you, you think your life was crazy, uh, thus far. Imagine when a country announces that they're going to be accepting a cryptocurrency that you own as a payment method within their country. It's going to be absolutely nuts. Alrighty. Let us move on. Uh, so, I mean, I, I really don't know where to begin or even where to end with this one. Um, there are certain times in life where you think that things will work out or, you, you, you know, you, you, you think I'm, I'm going to go buy some apples because I'm going to go eat some apples. Uh, you, you, you assume that when you see certain things in front of you, that certain things will happen. I don't even know if I even want to read through this. Uh, Coinbase apparently uh, opened up a donut shop or they did something with donuts. They, 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 they had a video. Here it is right here. They uploaded it uh, on Twitter to their platform uh, and they showed a, um, a cryptocurrency payment and how awesome it was after they bought some glazed donuts. I don't know if Coinbase is just trolling everyone at this point i don't know if they have something planned and they're just kind of like doing misdirection uh i can't play the video obviously like i've said before copyright blah 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 blah. uh the video is clearly edited they're showing it to show exactly how quick uh that cryptocurrency payments are uh something that rubbed me a little bit the wrong way and i know that this is because of um who they are and who the people who run uh coinbase are they used Bitcoin Cash to show the payment and how quick it was and how mighty it was and so and so and so. Um, I've said for quite a long amount of time that the people from Coinbase, uh, you can even you can even Google this. They they bet very heavily on Ethereum being the number one coin. If that ever happens, no one can tell the future. Uh, but the people from Coinbase uh, believe that Ethereum is going to be the number one coin and will eventually start outperforming Bitcoin. 
On the other side of that, something that also caught me by surprise maybe a couple of weeks ago is that apparently the people from Coinbase are also heavy Bitcoin Cash supporters, as they may probably eventually think in their hearts that Bitcoin Cash is actually going to become uh, the 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 number one coin at some point. Uh, I just think it's kind of weird. I feel like, uh, in my own opinion, if I was a uh, multi-billion dollar company, I would just add the coins that people have been asking for. I would not make videos of uh, someone buying donuts with Bitcoin Cash. I would probably not have a 12 days of Coinbase uh, where I announce nothing. It, it seems like everything that Coinbase does is just counterintuitive. You, when you When you talk about the things that you can do, like imagine if they took three and a half weeks and thought of how do, how do we expand the cryptocurrency markets? How, how do we add more liquidity? How can we get more people on board to our platform who already don't use it? What could we possibly... It's not like people have been asking since 2017 for something. Why don't... Guys, I, I think... Wait. Let's open up a donut shop. Let's record a video that's edited. And let's promote Bitcoin Cash. I don't know what the inner workings are. I don't know why they do what they do. I don't know who tells them to do what they do. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm actually at a loss of words. And I know that's very difficult because I tend to talk a lot and I talk also very fast. But when I saw this, it seems, like I said, it, it almost seems like a joke. You don't, I don't really get it. Like what's the, I don't know. Um, I felt like for a long time, my opinion, this is how I feel in my heart that Coinbase is horribly mismanaged uh, since 2017. When you have, uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, any of uh, Coinbase's posts. When they post, they always ask ridiculous questions that no one really cares about. And the same comments persist. It's probably about a, a good 60, 30, 10 split between diff three different coins. People have been telling them for years to add XRP, to add EOS, to add Cardano, and to add a slew of other coins to their platform. And they make videos about donuts. I don't get it. Um, if, if you, I, I, I don't know. I think I'm just going to move on. Uh, it's, it's incredibly frustrating when you have a bear market. And we all, we may not like to admit it all the time, but we know the power that Coinbase wields. As far as I'm um, sometimes being able to move prices, I am still under the mindset if they add, if, can you imagine if we woke up tomorrow morning and Coinbase had added XRP, EOS, Cardano, Omisego, and Ken to their platform, all with Euro, USD, and British pound pairings, do you think the market would go down or do you think the market would go up? I don't know what they're planning. I don't. I don't know exactly what their thing is. Uh, I've I've grown fatigued of Coinbase and their ridiculous actions. Uh, anyway, the point is, I saw this earlier. I thought it was a joke. Nope. Lo and behold, um, let's move on. Next up, so uh, this is a this is a cryptocurrency exchange that actually knows what they're doing. Binance is in the news. Binance CEO, his name is Chang Peng Cao. In a recent tweet shared the news that the decentralized exchange for Binance will be supporting hardware. It will be available from day one of the launch. Changping wrote on Twitter, he said, Binance's decentralized exchange will support hardware wallets from day one of the launch so that you can be sure your private keys never leave your device. The platform is reportedly in active development. Though Cao mentioned that the decentralized exchange will be supporting hardware wallets, he did not mention the specific wallets which would be involved. Um, without reading any further, it goes on to um, so-and-so, blah, 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 about the decks. Um, it has the, the, the names as far as Trezor, Ledger, and KeepKey. Uh, I've never heard of it. Don't attack me in the comment section. Just being honest. Uh, I can assume that these two are probably going to be uh, supported from day one. Uh, yeah. Uh, just just a great overall exchange. We're not, not, not only is a centralized exchange like Binance promoting heavily their decentralized exchange, they're talking about like every single day they're talking about the pairings that they're going to have, who's going to be able to do what. And now they're talking about from day one, you're going to be able to 
Um, have your private keys forever on your device exclusively for you, and they're going to be supporting uh, storage wallets. Just absolutely incredible. Short article. Amazing. Anyway, let's move on. To kind of uh, finish things up, Belarus Bank, the largest bank in Belarus, is considering setting up a crypto exchange. This was said by local information agency I don't know if that's Baida or Belta, Baida, on the 28th of January. That was today. According to the bank's chairman of the board, Viktor Ananish, efforts are now being made to explore the possibility of setting up a cryptocurrency exchange. Ananish claims that digitization is one of the most important focuses of Belarus Bank in 2019, noting that the bank is also working with mobile carriers aimed to expand its services. Specifically, Belarus Bank is planning to issue virtual cards, online rather than physical cards, credit cards in a few months as Ananish revealed. The chairman emphasized that the banking sector should keep up with the digital industry as the space is evolving very fast. Owned by the State Property Committee of Belarus, Belarus Bank is the leading banking institution in the country. According to its volume of equity, assets, loans, and deposits, Belarus Bank was reportedly estimated to have $13.5 billion in operating assets in 2017. We talk about the bank a little bit more. Very interesting, and I told you this was going to happen, and it's going to continue, keep on happening. I think they're just one of the, they're just one of the first ones who have uh, come out and said it, that they are, one, uh, when you announce that you're considering or thinking of the idea of doing it, uh, they've been planning this for a couple of years. I think they've been trying to position themselves accordingly in the market before they officially announce it. Um, I still think, rather than that, not for this specifically, uh, I think we're going to have some major, or we should, uh, have major announcements from a number of cryptocurrency things in quarter one. Uh, Coinbase could have been one of them, but I think we, by the time summertime rolls around, it should be a pretty good indication of exactly where the cryptocurrency space is going to go as far as if we're going to have another uh, downed trend year, if we're going to have a sideways year, or if we're going to have a, a bullish looking kind of year. Um, we already know that we're going to have multiple stock exchanges who are going to be launching their own cryptocurrency exchanges. I think banks are going to be another really big thing. Um, a lot of people out there may not like banks. That's not how the rest of the, the a large portion of the world works. Um, if you, not you listening, someone else who doesn't know about crypto, if you've heard about crypto, you know, in the background, someone mentioned it once before, you know, it's a thing and your bank sends you an, uh, an email or a letter that they're offering this service. The people are probably going to jump on it. This will also be a very big thing for, to, for people to get into the cryptocurrency space. Anyway, uh, prices right now aren't, um, that good. Uh, I told you all yesterday, every single time that I think of buying, I wait to the morning and this always happens. I don't know if I'm just synchronized with crypto. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what it is, uh, but I've definitely learned my lesson. I still haven't uh, been able to really figure out when the, when the bull market's going to happen, but I'm desperately working on that. The point is, um, everything is going down. You see Tether is shooting up, as are many of the other stable coins, because people are cashing out of the market. There was a, something that I read before. I think you can even see like the little the little tiny line going sideways right here. Uh, Bitcoin touched uh, 3,400 earlier. There were indications that if we end up going a lot lower, blah, 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 1,200, 2,200 Bitcoin price. Uh, I've said before, if we're going to hit it, just do it now. I don't think there's a point in waiting anymore. Uh, if you are a whale out there listening, uh, please just let it go and let the market kind of uh, go back to the to the good old days. Uh, yeah, there's no really coins that are kind of doing... I mean, Binance coin is kind of going up because it's Binance coin. I'm pretty sure people are actually swapping back and forth between that, especially when it comes to like all the other all stable coins in their platform. Super smart uh, thing that they have going. Uh, Tron is slipping... A bit. I think it's trying to recover itself, but I think a lot of the the uh, BTT hype has kind of not washed away. But you kind of get what I'm saying. Whenever there's going to be an airdrop, uh, there's always a, a situation that happens after the airdrop. But as of right now, um, yeah, everything's in the red. I wish it would just get redder so that we can be in the green. But that is definitely going to do it for this video. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I hope it's absolutely fan-freaking-tastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. 
I do appreciate all of your support. As always, a very, 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 very special thank you to my Patreon. Nope, got to go away. There we go. There we go. <laughs> to my Patreon supporters, Vlad the Impaler, Gil Boa Snake, Rai Rai, Brady Neolds, and L. Doug for all of your spectacular generosity. I do appreciate it. And yeah, I'll talk to you all soon. S see you.